It's 11 p.m. and these are the headlines. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, sends a message of condolences to the family of the former Minister of Trade, Laishi Yaker, hailing the qualities of the late who had carried out his duties with devotion and merit. All the latest updates on the situation in Gaza as the second day of the humanitarian truce knows an unprecedented development. Details in this edition. In order to enhance the potential for joint planning between the various components of the North African Regional Capability and Logistics Base, the 5th Military Region organized an exercise from November 18th to the 25th, 2023. Welcome back. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, sent a message of condolences today to the family of the former Trade Minister, Laya Shiaker, while praising the qualities of the late who had carried out his duties with dedication and commitment. In his message, the President of the Republic indicated that Algeria has lost one of the state's leading figures who took office of high responsibility jobs as an ambassador, an MP and a minister. The president carried out his message by sending the most sincere condolences in these painful circumstances to the family of the late while praying God Almighty to show his mercy and to bring patience and comfort to his family, to Allah be belong, and to him we shall return. We're taking stock on the second day of the four-day renewable humanitarian truce and after the Palestinian resistance has announced that the second round of the captives' release will be delayed due to the violation of the truce deal and the breaching of its standards by the Zionist occupation, the names of the hostages already agreed on and the captives' exchange deal got manipulated as well, alongside the number of the eight trucks agreed on the enter to enter Gaza. Shooting also occurred yesterday from the Zion side amid the truce. Tonight, an agreement was reached as 39 Palestinians will be freed. In the West Bank, the Zionist forces have killed two Palestinians in Jenin and arrested 17 Palestinians as well. Fifty days now of the continuous attacks on Gaza by the Zionist occupier. Updates with Anand Chattayar. The truth is not enough. The world must stop the crime of genocide in the occupied Palestinian territories. The losses exceed $4 billion since the start of the aggression on Gaza on October. 50% of housing was damaged by the bombings. 40,000 housing units were completely demolished. And as a consequence, 232,000 tons of explosives and more than 13,000 Zionist bombardments, 25 hospitals and 52 health centers are out of service. Also, the destruction of 55 ambulances, 255 schools were targeted too, 63 of them were completely out of service, 95 government headquarters were destroyed, 76 mosques were completely destroyed and 165 mosques were partially damaged. Concerning the humanitarian aid, while 230 tracks of humanitarian aid were heading to northern Gaza through the Rafah crossing, loaded with food, fuel and gas, and were expected to enter Gaza daily, only 70 tracks did arrive, and they were emptied from the majority of the aid goods. Our correspondent, Wissam Abu Zaid, shared with us the daily struggle of those who survived the horrors of the bombings and returned to their neighborhoods in search of what remains still. More details with Bonnie and Perry. From the first hours of the entry into force of the four-day humanitarian truce, hundreds of Palestinians turned home. 
discovering with amazement the devastating state of their neighborhoods and their homes. On site, the Algerian television correspondent Wissam Abu Zaid brings us the nightmare of the Palestinians faced with the scale of the catastrophe. We came to discover what remains of the neighborhood and see if our house hasn't been destroyed. It has a great value for us. We miss our house a lot. They left us nothing. As you see, everything is in ruins. We have nothing left. They demolished the houses on the heads of the inhabitants. Palestinians discovered the scale of the catastrophe caused by Zionist forces in the areas where they live. Massive damage was caused to roads, government institutions, buildings, infrastructure, water, electricity and communications networks. I have just seen the extent of the damage caused by the Zionist aggression. I no longer have a home. I have nowhere to go. The temporary ceasefire offers the Gazans a tense break, but the harsh reality emerged in the ruins that surround their homes. The streets have become silent, but despite all this, hope persists in the determination of Palestinians to rebuild their lives. We keep hope, we will not be weakened, and we are proud of our land. My father and my son fell as martyrs, but I always keep hope. In the midst of devastation, Palestinian hope emerged as a persistent force, determined to write a future of resilience, reconstruction and dignity. As we mentioned earlier, the headlines and as part of the reinforcement of the operational readiness of the regional capacity of North Africa and in order to enhance the potential for joint planning between the various components of the North African regional capability and logistics space based in Jijil province, the 5th military region organized an exercise from November 18th to the 25th entitled Salem North Africa. More details with Menem the launching ceremony for this exercise, held on November 23, 2023, was attended by Major General Belkasim Hasnat, head of the Employment Preparation Department of Staff of the National People's Army, in the presence of the Executive Secretary of the North Africa Regional Capacity, Ahmed Hamid Tajouri, as well as members of the Commissariat of the African Union and executives of the 5th Military Region. In line with the guidelines issued by the Army General Zaychengri Haji of Staff of the People's National Army on the mode of implementation related to Algeria's hosting of the post of North Africa Regional Capability Command entitled Salem North Africa II, I officially announced the start of this exercise. Glory to our valiant martyrs. The exercise, which was attended by delegations from the following member countries, Algeria, Egypt, Libya and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, took place on several stages, from planning and preparation to execution, which were marked by a high level of coordination between the participating delegations, notably in terms of joint planning between the components of the North African Regional Capability and the exercise of command, and control between the leaders and subordinates. The exercise of the North African Regional Capacity Command Post has been an opportunity to bring more experience in planning to the benefit of the officers and executives and to master the legal and operational measures to be taken during the employment of the peace support missions by the African Union enabling them to carry out their tasks of establishing security and peace on the African continent. We have achieved an excellent degree of joint planning. We have gained experience in the development of reports and applications for field missions at all commandment levels. There is a perfect harmony, as you have seen. I consider that we have achieved our main objective through this exercise. The command post exercise will enable the North African regional capacity to reach operational readiness. The work we have carried out at the Gigi Logistics Base is the fruitful result of the resources put in place by Algeria to successfully carry out this exercise. <laughs> 
Algeria, whether through its people or its government, has always welcomed us at every opportunity. This had a huge impact on the execution of the exercise and the holding of important meetings. The welcome we have been given encourage us to come back. Uh, the General Directorate of Communication of the Presidency of the Republic presents its sincere condolences to the family and the media family of the former journalist of Al-Mujahid Daily newspaper, Akli Hamouni, who passed away at the age of 72 years old. Praying God to welcome him into his vast paradise, to Allah we belong, and to him we shall return. The retired Algerian TV director of photography, Nadi Lahwil, who passed away at the age of 77, was laid to rest this afternoon at the Al-Aliya Cemetery. On such sad circumstances, the director of EPTV offers his sincere condolences to the family of the late and to all his colleagues, praying God to welcome him into his best paradise. To Allah we belong and to him we shall return. The late was one of the three survivors of the plane crash, plane crash which, carried, which carried a team of Algerian journalists on their way to, to Vietnam to cover the visit of the Algerian president, Wadi Boumedien, in 1974. In Morocco now, as several demonstrations took place today in several cities, protesters stormed the streets with Palestinian flag while calling for justice. <laughs> Motor sports now with the 18th edition of Le Colombe International Rally that witnessed great success this year from Tipaza to Antimushant via Schliff province. The participants were able to admire the magnificent, the magnificent landscapes of the West Coast. Some even regretted the fact of not having done this experience before. Report by Walid Yusufi, commentary by Rania Bahri. Bringing together around 40 national and foreign participants. Le Colombe International Rally experienced for the first time the presence of these motorcycle pilots from National Gendarmerie, a novelty for this 18th edition. The drivers had to cover road of around 550 kilometers spread over three stages following their road map. In each stage there are difficulties. A score at the end, the points are added and there is a champion, vice champion and a third one. Many people think that rallying is about speed. No, that's wrong. Rallying is an average of speed that we must respect. This rally was also an opportunity to mix competition and pleasure. Some pilots took this opportunity to discover several regions during their journey. The rivers, the olive forests are magnificent. It's a very beautiful landscape in a very beautiful country. We arrived in Algiers and this coastal region is very beautiful. We experienced the tourism and the rally at the same time. We were able to visit and enjoy the landscape. It was a great experience. An amazing atmosphere that leaves us eager while waiting for the 19th edition of Le Colombe International Rally to take place in October next year with a new route covering several provinces of the southwest of the country. That was it for today's news. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow.